all the 145 RCBs held their funds with NTAC until the central bank cleanup, which resulted in 53 finance houses and fund management companies' licenses were revoked. Interestingly, the license of NTAC was not revoked, which sent signals that it was operating on a stronger footing. But after months, the RCBs and other investors at NTAC are unable to access their funds. Sources at NTAC have said that the government owes them in that those funds have been used for government contracts. Therefore, until government pays them, there's little they can do. But government since December 2020 have coughed out 8.5 billion Ghana cities to help pay investors of the defunct asset management companies. 3.1 billion Ghana cities during the mid-year budget in December last year and 5.5 billion after the 2021 budget statement in parliament. In addition, government in August this year released a total of 800 million Ghana cities to be paid to road contractors as debt owed them. The question, however, is why was the NTAC license not revoked or liquidated to receive some of the bailouts given the asset management companies? Again, if government is owing NTAC as claimed by its officials, then why is government not paying them as such? Why should the innocent investors suffer from these developments? The implications, however, are that the situation has already affected the capital adequacy ratio and profitability levels of the RCBs. According to them, when the lockdown funds are paid, they will be able to give more loans to support farmers as well as small businesses in the operational areas to help them expand a situation which the universal banks are usually unable to support. Again, the RCBs have therefore cancelled most of their corporate social responsibilities they embark on in these operational areas. The rural banks have further argued that the Security and Exchange Commission acted within its mandate of protecting investors and authorized a partial bailout of up to 50,000 Ghana cities to all customers of the affected fund management companies but ignore to act on the situation with NTAC that is equally and directly guilty of same non-performance. Several attempts by these affected rural banks to retrieve their locked up funds from NTAC have yielded no result and this unfortunate situation has negatively affected the operation in many ways. In the wake of this development, the rural banks claim they are unable to wait any longer regardless of the further promises still being made by NTAC. Government of Ghana being the major shareholder of NTAC through its state agencies like SNIT is now being called to do the needful to ensure it settles monies owed to NTAC, which NTAC claims is causing them not to be able to settle debt owed them to these poor and suffering rural and community banks. Prince Apia reporting.